section 614 is on the stereochemistry of the SN1 reaction. When we were talking about the SN2 reaction, you learned that there is an inversion of configuration 100% of the time in the SN2 reaction. And we talked about how it was like an umbrella flipping itself inside out in the wind. The SN1 reaction, the SN1 mechanism, produces a racemic mixture. When there are stereoisomers possible. Racemic mixture. And if you remember from chapter 5, this means that you're going to get exactly 50% of the R product and 50% of the S product. And so in this section, we're going to look at how that happens. <clears throat> so for example, we're going to deal with 2-bromo butane. So this is a secondary alkyl halide. That means that it can go by either SN1 or SN2. Uh, we're going to force it to go by the SN1 reaction by choosing an appropriate solvent. We're not going to actually do um, a full-on mechanism for this reaction because we're going to be focusing just on the stereochemistry. This particular compound, if we want to assign stereochemistry to our chiral carbon, here's our high priority group. There's number two, there's number three. That's in an S configuration, but because the hydrogen is sticking forward, this is an R isomer. In the SN1 mechanism, remember, the initial step is just loss of the leaving group to form a carbocation. And the structure of that carbocation is going to look like this. And we have a positive charge on that carbon, but I'm not going to draw it in because what I want to draw in are the empty, unhybridized p orbital on that carbon atom as a result of the breaking of the carbon bromine bond. So when this bromine when this carbon bromine bond breaks, this carbon that was in this molecule sp3 hybridized becomes sp2. One, two, three areas of electron density, sp2 hybrid with one empty unhybridized p orbital with a lobe up above the plane of this molecule and a lobe down below the plane of the molecule. When this carbocation is hit by a nucleophile, let's say a methanol again, in, like it was in the last example, that nucleophile has two options about how it hits the carbocation. It can either hit down below into this lobe or it can hit up above in this lobe. Because this molecule is totally flat, it's planar, it's 50-50 possibility for it to go on either side. There's no uh, preference for the nucleophile to hit down here or up above. They're exactly the same. If the nucleophile comes in down below, right there, you are going to get you are going to get this isomer. And if the nucleophile comes in on top, you're going to get this isomer. And if we assign stereochemistry to both of these isomers, you'll see, you'll see that one of them is going to be R and one of them is going to be S. In our one on the left, this is priority number one, two, three. That is an S, but hydrogen is in front, so that makes this an R. 
and our other isomer is 1, 2, 3, that's an R, except hydrogen is in front, which makes it an S. So because of the way that the carbocation is situated with the empty lobes above and below the plane of the molecule, both of them equally likely to be attacked by the nucleophile, you get a perfect 50-50 mixture of R and S. So let's just go ahead and write that in the nucleophile. Can attack at either the top or bottom of the carbocation. And that's it for this section on stereochemistry. Your study question, and I just realized you should be writing your own study questions at this point, but I'm going to do them for you with this. Your study question for this section, why does SN1 produce a racemic mixture of products? I don't think that you need to write a summary for this section because it's so short.